Hi, there we go. Good evening, guys. How are you? Hello, hello. How are you doing today, guys? Really happy to see you. Teacher. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. How about yourself? Good, teacher. Awesome. It was a, a relaxed day. I'm really happy to hear that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on time, guys. You are the first one to come to the class. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you to the ones that just joined the class. I know <sighs> that you guys had some time. Hopefully you guys had some time to relax and maybe uh, probably do things that you like, like maybe spend time with, spend time with family and friends or maybe go dancing for example do you like to go to dance <laughs> do you like dancing guys i'm not good at dancing to be honest with you i'm really bad like they say i have two left foot two left feet in this case <laughs> i'm I'm really <laughs> bad i really suck guys i'm really you don't want to see me dancing because i'm really bad <laughs> i can only say that soy bastante malo la verdad guys espero algún día mejorar yo admiro a la gente que puede hacerlo porque yo soy muy descoordinado, o sea, eh, no, mi cuerpo no me obedece, le digo, hazte para acá y se hace para el otro lado y así. <laughs> es, es un problema. We need to practice, teacher. We need to practice, yes. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that the practice makes the, the master, <laughs> like they say. <laughs> so, really happy to see you guys. Thank you for coming. Bueno, para esta semana, guys, eh, vamos a estar, creo, un poco más tranquilos, quizás. La semana pasada teníamos, bueno, algunos ya avanzaron bastante, como Julio, la verdad. Julio ya va súper avanzado. Eh, la semana pasada solamente teníamos que completar hasta la sección número 2. Y para esta semana tenemos, digamos, la sección 3. Y el examen de medio plazo, por así decirlo. Así creo que se llama. El midterm exam. So basically, those are the only two things that we need to do. And last week, we didn't like check all the classes because we were like working on other things. So we didn't check all the classes. So I just want to basically take some time so I can present that information to you so we can, pra so we can practice, maybe check a couple of things together. And then we are going to move on to the... Uh, new section for this week, which is section number three. That is what we need for this week, section number three. And then the midterm exam. Those are the two things that we really need, All right? So we are going to be working on that. So I just wanted to give you like a little summary, okay? Bueno, vamos a ver. Eh, vamos a ver por acá. A ver, ¿qué tal? Cuéntenme, ¿qué hicieron? Eh, what did you guys uh, do on the weekend? Uh, did you do something exciting? Uh, did you uh, went uh, like shopping or did you do the, just uh, cleaning in the house or things like that? What did you guys do? Vamos a ver, preguntémosle a Sofía. What did you do on the weekend, Sofía? I cleaned my home and washed the dishes. All right, very good. <laughs> just like adult people, right? Uh, we have to stay home and just uh, do the dishes and things like that. We don't have like that much time. I remember that when I was a kid, I wanted I wanted to be like an adult so I could like have a lot of money uh, and then do whatever I wanted. But that is not what happens when you get old. I mean, at the end, you only have to work and pay a lot of things like pay the electricity bill. You have to pay for uh, your phone. So it's not really fun, right? <laughs> I think that you guys probably agree. <clears throat> no sé si les pasa, guys. A mí me pasó desde pequeño. Yo decía, ya quiero ser grande. Ya quiero ser grande. Y poder este, hacer lo que quiera. Ya cuando tenga 18 años, o sea, yo voy a hacer, ya voy a tener casa, ya voy a tener todo lo que yo quiera. Y pues, acá estábamos todavía. <ríe> así que así es la vida, ¿verdad? 
nos toca luchar. Pero bueno, guys, uh, vamos a ver. Uh, vamos a ver por acá. Bueno, como les dije, vamos a ver por ahora. No sé si tal vez hagamos algo antes de comenzar. Ya casi se unieron todos. Ahorita estamos solamente 10. Somos creo que 14. So we can give it just a couple of minutes. So. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. So. All right. So what can you guys tell me about the weather? How is the weather like in your area? Because here it's been really hot all day. Really, really hot. It's very hot here, but at night it's raining. Oh, really? So is it raining right now or do you mean? No, in, in the middle of the night, I think because now it's very hot. Right now it's really hot. Yeah, I, yeah it's the same here. Um, well, hopefully it rains later because I want to have uh, some good rest. I just want to go to bed and just fall asleep. And hopefully it rains because I, I like it when it rains. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that makes me, it makes me like happy, let's say, <laughs> when it rains. I like it. I like it. Yo soy más de la gente del, del frío que del calor, la verdad, guys. Yo, yo sufro. En estos días, les digo que paso con el ventilador todo el día, ¿eh? So, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't like uh, when it's hot. I, I like when it's cold. I'm a cold people. I'm a cold person. Right? Let's say yeah, that. Yeah, me too. You too, okay. <laughs> me too, teacher. You too. You don't like it when it is hot, Jorge. You don't like it. No, teacher. I don't. I don't match. All right, so For me, it's, it's better the call. It's a right. I totally agree with you, Jorge. I mean, yeah. if, if it is cold, you can just uh, take a blanket, you can get into the bed, and then just uh, put on some clothes, maybe. Then everything is fine. But when it is hot, I mean, there is much, I mean, nothing that we can do. I, I just want to take a shower like all the time, or maybe. <laughs> yes, teacher. And uh, for me, it's better the cold because I came to drink a coffee and eating right. all day. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. That's great. Muy bien, yes. A mí también, la verdad que yo prefiero cuando está caliente, eh, me tomo un cafecito por ahí, como dice Jorge, una semita, ¿verdad? Un semitón de esos ahí. De, de esas mieludas. Y ya, pues, ahí está. Ahí se va. Bueno, guys, muchas gracias. Y creo que ya estamos la mayoría. De verdad les agradezco eh, por conversar conmigo. Luego para que podamos un poco despertarnos, ¿verdad? También porque a esta hora quizás ya estamos un poco cansados, ya, ya estamos pensando en otras cosas a veces. Entonces, pues, es para que no sea tan aburrido, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver por acá. Eh, vamos a ver, ¿qué le voy a compartir? Eh, esto. All right, no, this is not the one I wanted. But let me just uh, change it really quick. Vamos a ver por aquí. Right, guys. So, I'm sorry. To, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Hopefully. Sorry about that. Right, so guys, uh, last week we um, basically learned a couple of things, like we learned about the past continuous and also the simple past. And then we also learned about uh, some words that we can use so we can basically uh, add more information to the, uh, let's say, um, actions that we are trying to describe. Like, for example, uh, you guys were saying uh, things like, So I was in the yard when all of a sudden it started raining. So I had to go back inside the house. So you were saying things like that. So we learned a couple of words that we can use for that. 
uh, we learned some adverbs. That's what we call it, adverbs, okay? So we learned about that. And then we basically had to review this information. We have to go over uh, this topic and then the next one. So those are the only two things that we missed last week, okay? So we have uh, this uh, conversation, which is uh, a conversation between two people about what have you been doing, right? So we are going to learn about the present perfect continuous. That is the topic for today. We are going to review the information really quick, and then we are going to practice a little bit, okay? So let's, let's do it. Vamos a ver. Eh, este tema, guys, es acerca del presente perfecto continuo. Eh, bueno, esto creo que ustedes lo han utilizado bastante. Muchas veces decimos como, eh, yo he estado haciendo algo. Así que básicamente nos referimos como a una acción que empezó eh, en el pasado y ha tenido continuidad hasta el presente que incluso puede que en este momento todavía lo estemos haciendo. Like, I have been uh, watching TV uh, since uh, 8 a.m. or I have been waiting in this uh, room or in this uh, place for two hours, uh, things like that, right? So we are going to listen to the conversation really quick so we can learn about the topic, okay? So here we go. Vamos a escucharlo. Rapidico. Por aquí vamos, guys. Déjenme ver. Vamos a cambiar la velocidad. Probably in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I... Hello. This time, we want you to listen to the following conversation. The idea is for you to understand what's going on and also to practice it with a friend or a relative. Once you do that, we want you to play the second part of the conversation and get ready to answer the question I have for you. What have you been doing? Part A. Listen and practice. Hey, Gina. I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. What has happened to Pete and Gina since they last saw each other? I haven't been getting any work. All right, guys. Uh, so before we continue, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, so we have, like I mentioned before, we have this conversation between two people. We have Pete and we have Gina. So. It seems like they haven't seen each other in a long time. So it's, it's probably the first time that they meet each other in maybe a year or more. <clears throat> so basically, Pete uh, says, hey, Gina, I haven't seen you in ages. Okay. Cuando decimos esta expresión, I haven't seen you in ages, como que no te he visto en un montón de tiempo. O sea, hace mucho tiempo. <clears throat> ages. Eh, ¿Qué has estado haciendo últimamente? All right, so what have you been doing lately? Nothing, nothing exciting. I've been working two jobs for the last six months, okay? Dice, eh, nada emocionante, ¿verdad? Exciting es emocionante. Eh, he estado trabajando, he estado trabajando en dos trabajos por los últimos seis meses, okay? So when you guys want to talk about, uh, let's say, uh, your job, okay, basically the place that you go to so you can uh, go to work. So that's your job, okay? Like, for example, if you guys work, uh, let's say for, for example, if you guys work for a communication company like maybe Claro or something like that, uh, then uh, that's your job, okay? So that's my job. Uh, this is my job to teach you, right? So in my job, I teach people uh, English, for example. So uh, just think about it. Just uh, try to keep that in mind, okay? Because uh, I know that sometimes we want to say like, uh, so my work or things like that, but that's that's not the way it is. You have to say my job, okay? <clears throat> but uh, how come? Okay, esta es una expresión que utilizamos. How come? Es como, eh, ¿cómo? O por, ¿Por qué? O sea, I need a job. Perdón. Eh, vamos a ver. 
Entonces ella le dice que nada emocionante. He estado trabajando por, en dos trabajos por los últimos seis meses. Y ella como, how come? Eh, o sea, ¿cómo? Eh, so I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Okay? Estoy ahorrando dinero. Okay, guys. So you may have a saving account. And do you know what a saving account is? Yes, teacher. You do. Okay, very good. So we have saving accounts. We have checking accounts, for example. And we have also, I think, that routing accounts, if I'm not mistaken. So to save money, it means that you are putting some money away for something. Like, for example, in this case, if you want to go uh, on vacation to another country, then you probably want to save some money to do that, right? So that's what we say. I'm saving money for that. So this, uh, then it says, well, that's exciting. Yes, it is. What about you? So, well, I've only been spending money. <laughs> bueno, por otro lado, Pete dice que él solamente ha estado gastando dinero, ¿verdad? So we save money and we spend money. Those are the two things. That's the, like the opposite. Okay. So he says that he's pursuing a full-time modeling career. Okay. <clears throat> Pete está persiguiendo una carrera de modelaje a tiempo completo. Okay. Fíjense, guys, que en el inglés en muchas ocasiones tenemos que, <clears throat> como por así decirlo, leer como en sentido contrario, como en el español, ¿verdad? Tenemos acá carrera de modelaje a tiempo completo. Okay. Full-time modeling career. So it's like the other way around, right? So, carrera de modelaje a tiempo completo. Así. En muchas ocasiones es así. So, then he says, uh, really? How long have you been modeling? Okay, por cuánto, cuánto tiempo? How long have you been modeling? Por cuánto tiempo has estado modelando? So, since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. Okay. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. Right? So like I mentioned the last time, guys, uh, when you don't have like too much of something, like or when you uh, are like spending more and more to the point that you almost have nothing, then uh, you are like out of something. Like I'm out of money. I'm out of, let's say, uh, medicine, for example. So things like that. Okay. Vaya, ¿tenemos alguna pregunta acerca de esto, guys? Quería solamente como explicarles un poco acerca del vocabulario, ¿verdad? Está aquí involucrado, para que no nos quede ninguna duda. No sé si tienen alguna eh, pregunta hasta ahora. Esta es la introducción acerca de el presente perfecto continuo. Si se fijan, tenemos acá en nuestro sujeto, el verbo auxiliar have o has, dependiendo de cuál sea el sujeto. Luego eh, tenemos aquí eh, la palabra been, que es el pasado participio del verbo eh, to be. Y por último tenemos un verbo en la forma ing. Ya vamos a ver bien cómo es la estructura para hacer eh, todas las oraciones. Solamente para que ustedes lo, lo tengan ahí como una referencia, ¿ok? Así que si no hay preguntas, vamos a avanzar. Soon. I'm almost out of money. What has happened to Pete and Gina since they last saw each other? Please write your answer on our discussion box. Part B. Listen to two other people at the party. What has happened since they last saw each other? Vale, entonces acá lo que nos dice en el video es que nosotros digamos qué es lo que le ha pasado a cada uno de ellos desde la última vez que se vieron. <coughs> Perdón. Entonces vamos a ver. Eh, vamos a intentar practicar. Quiero que me digan ustedes qué le ha pasado a, a cualquiera de ellos. Vamos a ver. Tratemos de... Eh, de alguna forma relatar, ¿verdad? ¿Qué es lo que dicen ellos ahí? ¿Quién quiere participar? Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver quién está por acá. Ah, quiero ver. Vamos a preguntarle a alguien por acá. ¿Qué tal? Eh, veamos. Wendy, por ejemplo, tal vez. Uh, can you tell us, Wendy, uh, what they have been doing since the last time that they met each other? Vamos a ver, Wendy, Wendy parece que no está por ahí. 
Eh, ¿Qué tal, Brenda? Brenda, tampoco. Vamos a ver, ¿qué tal, Osmin? Tal vez Osmin nos puede ayudar. Mr. Rivera, uh, can you tell us a little bit about they have what they have been doing since the last time that they met each other? You can say like, for example, so Gina, she has been uh, doing this, or you can say uh, Pete has been like doing something. You can say, you can choose, I mean, uh, whatever you want, okay? No sé si está claro, Osmin, solamente me tiene que decir qué es lo que ha hecho eh, por ejemplo, Pete, o qué es lo que ha hecho Gina desde la última vez que se vieron, en base a la conversación. Uh, ellos, ellos tienen eh, en inglés, teacher, o en español. Mm -hmm. Yes, please, in English, please. Ah, ok. Uh, they, they have. Eh, mm -hmm. Uh, any any time any eyes no lo he entendido muy bien yo. <laughs> no hay problema no hay problema Mr. Rivera so right for example uh let's say that you want to describe what Gina has been doing so you can say for example so Gina she has been working uh two jobs for the last six months. You can say something like that, for example. Or then you can say, uh, Pete, uh, he, ha he has been uh, trying uh, to get a full-time modeling career, for example. Básicamente solo queremos decir qué es lo que han estado haciendo. Entonces usted puede decir, okay. eh, digamos, Gina, ella ha estado trabajando eh, en dos okay. trabajos y así. Ah, okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. okay, teacher. Uh, Gina, how to... to... To Joe, mm -hmm. uh, she is uh, tired for mm -hmm. the to Joe, and she must be tired. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, Pete, Pete uh, is exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Vaya, bueno, entonces, di digamos, eh, en base a lo que usted me está diciendo, Osmin, por ejemplo, um, usted puede decir, uh, so Gina, uh, uh, she probably is tired because uh, she's been, she has been working uh, two jobs, for example. You can say something like that, ¿ok? Easy, se lo voy a anotar por acá, para que usted lo pueda decir. Ok. Vamos a ver aquí. So Gina... Uh, is tired, for example, because she has been working two jobs. Okay, so now uh, can you please just uh, repeat or just uh, read the sentence that we have right here? Okay, Gina is tired because she has been working two jobs. Awesome. Uh, she she is probably to have uh, many how do you say deudas <laughs> debts okay <laughs> she probably has too many uh, debts too many. Yeah. Okay. very good very good there we go awesome thank you so much I mean I appreciate that <laughs> good job excelente bueno, entonces aquí tenemos la participación de Osmin en este caso si se fijan, eh, nosotros podemos utilizar más información. ¿verdad? Probablemente ella tiene muchas deudas y por eso está trabajando eh, en dos trabajos, porque no le alcanza. <ríe> Así que bueno, puede ser, puede ser, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, por aquí creo que teníamos a alguien que quería participar. No sé si era Jorge. Ok, teacher. Eh, Gina has been saving up money because she wants to travel from Morocco and Peter. She wants to travel to Morocco, okay? And Peter. And Peter has been getting any work because. Mm -hmm. 
Because he done an excellent job. He has done an excellent job. Okay. Vamos a ver. Muy bien. Muchas gracias, Jorge. Well, so there are just a couple of things, Jorge, in this case. Uh, aquí me equivoqué yo. <laughs> Vamos a borrarle esto. So Gina has been saving up money because she wants to travel to Morocco. Very good. Awesome. And then Peter uh, has not, vamos a decir, has not been getting, uh, or bueno, si queremos decir que él sí ha estado consiguiendo trabajo, entonces estaría bien, ¿verdad? Uh, Peter has been getting, um, en este caso eh, utilizaríamos otra palabra, porque any por lo general es como para con un contexto negativo, ¿verdad? Entonces, si queremos decir que él sí ha conseguido trabajo, vamos a decir some. Or, let's say, for example, many, uh, a lot of work in this case. He's been getting a lot of work because he has done an excellent uh, job, for example. Así que cambia, ¿verdad? De acuerdo a la, al sentido de la oración, vamos a utilizar una palabra o la otra. En este caso, como hablamos del trabajo, eh, vamos a utilizar, por ejemplo, a lot of, esta, esta expresión. Porque el trabajo es algo que no, es un concepto, ¿verdad? Es algo que no se puede medir. Así que, eso es una, como unos pequeños tips ahí. Bueno, muchas gracias, Jorge. Thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Bueno, vamos a ver. Ahora tenemos a Carla Delgado. Sí. Ok, I have uh, different sentences. Uh -huh. For example, Pete is always happy because he has been spending a lot of money since he got the modeling careers. While Gina has been afforded so much, you have a good experience in Morocco. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Carla, excellent job. So I can see that uh, you did like, use all of the vocabulary and all of the uh, sentences that we learned before. Thank you. Bueno, aquí creo que me va a tener que repetir otra vez porque no lo logré anotar todo. Carla, así que, okay. perdón ahí. <laughs> Vamos a ver, ¿cómo fue? Okay. Pete is always mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. because he has been spending a lot of money mm -hmm. since he got the modeling career mm -hmm. the modeling career okay while Gina mm -hmm. has been for so much okay. has been to have for... a good for the exporsarse oh okay has been uh, making uh, a lot of effort, let's say. <laughs> ¿Cómo, cómo lo estaba diciendo usted? It has been effort, eh, así. Ajá, sí. Ah, ok. Vamos a ver, vamos a decir, he, she has been making a lot of effort. Oh. Así. To mm -hmm. have a good experience in Morocco. Experience in Morocco. Ok, very good. Muy bien, muchas gracias, Carla. De verdad, usted lo hizo bastante ya más extenso, ¿verdad? Y utilizamos bastante por acá de lo que hemos estado viendo anteriormente. Así que muy buen trabajo. Vamos a ver. So Pete is always happy because he's been, aquí yo lo hice como así. Vamos a ver. He's been spending a lot of money since he got the modeling career. Okay. So that's, that's true. Actually, that's what it says in the conversation. So it seems like Pete is been spending a lot of money all the time. And then Gina, uh, she has been making, while well, Gina has been making a lot of effort, okay? Or she's been struggling, for example, uh, to have a good experience in Morocco, okay? Awesome. Thank you so, thank you so much. Vamos a ver. Por acá, no sé si teníamos alguien más, me pareció. O si no, pues avanzamos. Y muchas gracias a los que participamos. Vamos a ver. Creo que ya estamos, ¿verdad? Bueno, muchas gracias, guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. Awesome job. Vamos, ver, vamos por el siguiente. Bueno, vamos a terminar de escuchar esto. Vamos a ver de qué se trata. Ya creo que ya vamos entrando bien en el tema. De hecho, les quería mostrar algo. Perdón. Vamos a ver acá. Por aquí tenemos brevemente la estructura para esto. Solamente para que ustedes la vean. Creo que es bien intuitivo, ¿verdad? Ustedes ya lo están usando sin ni siquiera haber visto la estructura. So we have the structure, guys. Basically, this is what it is. We have the positive statement, then we have the questions, and then we have negative statements, right? So 
for a statement or a positive sentence, we just use the subject like this. And then we have have or has, then been. Okay, that's really important. We always use been in all the sentences. And then we have the verb with the ing form, okay? Like waiting, waiting, or whatever. And then we have the complement at the end. So you have been waiting here for two hours. Or then if you want to make a question, you just change the order. Really easy, okay? Have you been waiting here for two hours? And then uh, if you want to make a negative sentence, then you just have to add, you have not been waiting. So we just have to add this after have, okay? So you have not been waiting here for two hours. Just like that. It's really easy, guys. Se lo voy a compartir. Se lo voy a compartir ahí por el eh, WhatsApp. Solamente. Creo que es bien fácil. No creo que ni lo necesiten. Pero solamente para que lo tengamos ahí a la mano, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver acá. There we go. Vaya, les voy a mostrar también, guys, un par de situaciones en las que nosotros utilizamos. Eh, este tiempo del verbo, ¿ok? Vamos a ver acá, ¿dónde está? Aquí lo tengo. Y tres, intermediate, module number three. Vaya, por acá está. Ahí se los mandé al WhatsApp. Y ahora, espero que todo esté bien aquí. Vamos a ver. Ahí está. I just want to make sure, guys, I'm a little paranoid. Vamos a ver. So we have this, like, we have two uses for the simple, uh, I'm sorry, for the present perfect continuous. We have two uses for that. So let me just explain you a little bit about this, okay? Vaya. So, aquí tenemos eh, dos usos del presente perfecto continuo. Son los usos más comunes. Tenemos que utilizamos el presente perfecto continuo para mostrar que algo comenzó en el pasado y ha continuado hasta ahora. Como les dije al principio. Like for five minutes, for two weeks, and let's say since Tuesday, all are all durations, right? Like which can be used with the present perfect continuous. Like for example, we have some examples here, like they have been talking for the last hour. She has been working at a comp at that company for three years. What have you been doing for the last 30 minutes? James has been teaching at the university since June. Uh, we have been waiting here for over two hours, okay? Over two hours. Why Nancy, uh, why has Nancy not been taking her medicine for the last three days? Aquí tenemos más ejemplos, guys. Eh, si ustedes creen que les pueden, digamos, ser de utilidad, pues acá están más ejemplos en los que utilizamos más vocabulario, ¿verdad? So, si se fijan bastante, eh, se utiliza para hablar eh, acerca de cosas que empezaron en el pasado hasta ahora y tienen alguna duración. Sí, es bastante común, ¿verdad? Como the last hour, for three years, last 30 minutes, since June, for over two hours, for the last three days. So, but you can see that's really common. Bueno, vamos a ver. Si no tienen preguntas, vamos a pasar a la siguiente. Es el uso número dos. ¿Alguna pregunta, guys? ¿O quieren que lo deje un poco más por acá? Or can we just continue? Bueno, vamos a continuar entonces. Si no hay preguntas, vamos a continuar. Vamos aquí a cambiarle a esto porque no se ve bien. Vamos a cambiar. Ahí está, un poquito más. Bueno. All right. So then we have also the use number two. So we have recently and lately. So you can also use the present perfect without a duration, such as for two weeks or for the last three days, we also can do this. Like recently, I have been feeling tired. Okay. I had to work two jobs. So recently, I have been feeling tired, really tired. And then uh, she has been watching too much television lately. Or have you been exercising lately? Aquí algo bien importante, guys. Eh, <clears throat> normalmente cuando utilizamos esta forma, eh, como para hacer preguntas o algo así, es porque nosotros estamos como insinuando algo, por así decirlo. Vaya, por ejemplo, si yo le pregunto a uno de ustedes, 
Uh, have you been exercising lately? Probablemente es porque yo veo que eh, tienen algún cambio físico, ¿ok? Que tal vez se les nota un poco que ustedes han estado haciendo ejercicio. Como decimos nosotros, ¿verdad? Se te nota que has estado en el gimnasio. Entonces, hay que tener cuidado a la hora de preguntar, utilizando esto, porque tal vez pudiera implicar que estamos insinuando algo, ¿verdad? Y en alguna ocasión puede que no sea una buena idea. ¿Me entienden? Entonces, eh, hay que tener cuidado, ¿verdad? Entonces, like, have you been exercising lately? Or if I say, Jorge, uh, have you been practicing lately? Because you are, you sound really good. I mean, you have, you have made a lot of progress with your English. So maybe I can say something like that. that that's just an example. Así que, por ejemplo, si yo le pregunto a, a Jorge, Jorge, ¿ha estado usted practicando inglés? Porque de verdad se escucha mucho mejor. Entonces sería como un ejemplo, ¿verdad? Es lo mismo en este caso. Es como que estamos, como que hemos notado algo nosotros y por eso lo estamos preguntando. ¿Ok? So then we have Mary has been feeling a little depressed. ¿Ok? That is not good, guys. That is not good. If you feel depressed, uh, I think that the best thing to do is to get some professional help, like some mental help, right? Okay, so, si se fijan otro, otro ejemplo, ¿verdad? Solamente intentemos ponerle atención siempre a, la, a las expresiones, ¿verdad? Nosotros con estas expresiones podemos después eh, entablar conversaciones. So, then Lisa has not been practicing her English. So, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Okay. ¿Qué has estado haciendo? ¿Qué has estado haciendo? All right. So, any question, guys? Basically, uh, there are just like these are two most common uses for the present perfect continuous. I just wanted to show you this really quick. Vaya, vamos a ver. Si no hay preguntas, pues vamos a continuar entonces. Eh, vamos a intentar practicar, guys. Que esa es la idea, ¿verdad? Vamos a continuar con el video. Hey Bob, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I just got back from a vacation in Italy. Italy? Where in Italy? Mostly in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I see. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. In fact, I just got engaged to a guy I met there. You're kidding. Well, that must have been some vacation. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen... Okay, guys, vamos a hacer una cosa. Por favor, escúchenlo y tomen nota, si pueden. Para que ustedes me cuenten acerca de qué se trata esto, okay? I, I want you guys to be really specific. Like, for example, she said something like, uh, I got engaged. Okay? I got engaged. <laughs> And that's really exciting, right? So I want you guys to take notes. And then, so you can tell me. Okay? So let's listen to it one more time. Hey, Bob. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I just got back from a vacation in Italy. Italy? Where in Italy? Mostly in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I see. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. In fact, I just got engaged to a guy I met there. You're kidding. Well, that must have been some vacation. All right, so then we, we have the question right here. What about these two people? What have they been doing? So what have they been doing, guys? Vamos a ver. Veamos. ¿Lo pudieron escuchar o todavía sienten que tenemos que oírlo otra vez? No, no lo lograron anotar todo, ¿verdad? Se I... fue. <laughs> you didn't. One more time, please. One more time. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. No problem. I can go back. 
What have you been up to? Well, I've been. Hey, Bob. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I just got back from a vacation in Italy. Italy? Where in Italy? Mostly in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I see. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. In fact, I just got engaged to a guy I met there. You're kidding. Well, that must have been some vacation. Right, so there we go, guys. So, what had they been doing? Vamos a ver. We need to try to say, like, I mean, uh, we need to be very specific. So, what did they say at the beginning? Vamos a ver. Romeo, he wants to, he wants to uh, participate. Bob, very good. Thank you, yes, Romeo. Uh, Bob said uh, he has been looking for a house to buy because he's tired, he's tired uh, renting. Um, right. Yeah, so he said that he's been looking for a house to buy because he's, he's tired of yes. renting, right? Tired of renting. Okay, awesome, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, right, okay, yes, yes, it is correct. Is that, is that it? Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Romeo, thank you. Vamos a ver. Then we have Mr. Campos, Julio. Sí. Uh, yeah, uh, she's, uh, uh, she's been, um uh, she's been in Italy. Um uh, right. <clears throat> uh, in a uh, in vacation mm -hmm. uh, mostly in the north around Malone. Awesome. Uh, Milan, I think it is. <laughs> Malone, uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, she has a cousin. Uh, she has a cousin there, and uh, he asked her how, how was the how was his vac vacation. Her she, vacation, right? Her vacation. Uh, vacation. She said, uh, "It was it was good, and she got engaged." Right. And, uh, he met a guy, or oh, uh, in. And that's all, I think. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julio. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, yep. Um, just like Julio said, so she went on vacation. Okay, guys, remember that. He went on vacation. Vamos a ver. Se lo puedo ir anotando aquí. A veces se nos van unas palabritas, se nos van, la verdad. Es porque como... Es, a veces se nos, se nos olvida, ¿verdad? Pero no hay problema. Solo son palabritas nada más. So she went on vacation. Okay, remember, guys, on vacation. She went on vacation. Uh, let's say to Italy. North Italy, I think she said. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I think she said Milan, something like that. Yeah. And uh, because she has a, because uh, she has a cousin, uh, I think she said. Yeah. There. Vamos a ver. And then uh, it says, vamos a ver, ¿qué más dijo Julio? Eh, ah, so uh, he asked her, her, okay, about, uh, ya no me acuerdo la verdad. ¿Qué más dijo Julio? Perdón. Uh, how was your vac vacation? How was, said, uh, how was her, how was your vacation? Her vacation, okay. Very good. Her. ¿Verdad? Estamos hablando acerca de ella, así que her. Her mm -hmm. vacation. Muy bien. Sí, porque a veces, eh, a mí me pasaba, guys, creo que eh, a ustedes tal vez les pueda pasar también, de que a veces se confundía, era como que his or her, and then I, you got confused, and then we end up saying, 
uh, something like different, right? But that's fine. We need, just need to practice so it can become like natural. So we don't have to think about it that much. Bueno, entonces acá dice, ella se fue on vacation, let's say, on vacation to North Italy. Vamos a ver. Que, uh, no sé si alguien más quiere participar aparte de Julio. By the way, thank you. Mi, Milan is the, the, the city that she visited. That is correct. Yeah. Vamos a ver, tenemos a Beatriz por ahí. Let's see what Beatriz has to say. Okay. Pete looking by a house because he's tired of renting. He's looking for a house. Okay. Because uh, he's he tired. tired of renting. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Very good, Beatrice. And what else? And Gina went to the trip and her in in Jane in Jane. Uh, excuse me. Gina went to the trip in mm -hmm. her in in Jenji eh, comprometida. Oh, and she got engaged, right? Okay. In in Jenji. <laughs> I know it's really difficult to pronounce. I don't worry. Don't yeah. Worry. That's... <laughs> no hay problema. Vamos, vamos a hacer una cosa. Eh, yo normalmente para que <laughs> A mí a veces hay palabras que yo ni las puedo pronunciar. Entonces lo que yo hago es que busco algún, por ejemplo, algún video por ahí en, en YouTube, ¿verdad? De cómo se pronuncia. Muchas gracias, por cierto. Entonces vamos a buscar un video. Yo se lo voy a compartir. Déjenme buscarlo por aquí. Para que practiquemos algunas palabras, ¿verdad? Estas palabras eh, a veces son útiles. A veces nos preguntan como nuestro estado marital. Like, for example, they may ask you something like, what is your marital status? Then they are going to ask like, are you single, married, widow, or di divorced, things like that. So that kind of things uh, sometimes is important. Vamos a ver por acá. Eh, perdón. Vamos a ver. Ya me... eh, ahí está. Bueno, ahí está. Perdón, guys. No sé si Julio todavía quería decir algo o, o si todavía le quedó la mano ahí levantada. Sorry, teacher, la bata. No problem. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Así que, bueno, vamos, le voy a buscar un video por acá y se lo voy a mandar para que ustedes puedan practicarlo, ¿verdad? Un ratito que tengan libre. Engaged. Pronunciation. Vamos a ver, aquí se lo voy a mandar. Give me just a second, guys. So I can do that. Vamos a ver por acá. Bueno, más tardecito se lo voy a enviar, porque tengo que buscarlo. Así que no hay problema. Lo vamos a dejar así por ahora. All right, so, vamos a continuar. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta más o, o si alguien más quiere participar. Si no, pues vamos a avanzar. Vamos a avanzar. Esta parte solamente recuerden de que es porque la habíamos dejado pendiente, ¿verdad? La estamos revisando porque estaba pendiente. Luego, para esta semana, como les estaba diciendo... A los que entraron más temprano para esta semana, tenemos que completar la sección 3 y el examen de medio plazo. ¿Ok? Eso es lo que tenemos que hacer para esta semana. Para los que ya lo hicieron, pues ya no hay ningún problema. Pero igualmente. Vamos a, vamos a escuchar el video. Esto es acerca del presente perfecto continuo. Vamos a escucharlo rapidito. Hi, we want you to go back to the previous conversation. Can you find examples of statements with have and haven't been? Now, we want you to stay for the explanation of the structure and use of the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. 
Moving on. Present perfect continuous is a tense used for. A continuous repeat. Ese soy yo. No, no puedo ahorrar dinero. Solamente lo estoy gastando. Soy. <ríe> bueno, continuemos entonces. Repeated activity that began in the past and continues into the present. It emphasizes the activity itself and its duration. Mm -hmm. Let's look at these examples. Jack has been waiting for over an hour. I've been studying since three o'clock. How long have you been studying French? And last but not least, we'll go over the structure of this tense. For affirmative, this is what we use. I, we, you, they, plus have been, plus verb, plus ing. He, she, it, plus has been, plus verb, plus ing. When in negative, we need to add the word not between have or has and been. And as always, in questions, the helping verb or the auxiliary goes at the beginning, followed by the subject, like this. Have plus subject plus been plus verb plus ing plus complement. Have you been saving money? Can you now work on the following exercises? How long have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? What have you been eating? Bueno, entonces por acá, guys, tenemos, eh, prácticamente es lo que les estaba explicando antes, ¿verdad? La estructura, oraciones positivas, oraciones negativas, las preguntas y cuáles son los usos. Ok, ya, ya lo vimos. Así que no sé si tenemos una pregunta con respecto a eso. Preguntas, ni questions, ni concerns about that. No questions, right? Bueno, vamos a ver. Eh, si gustan, podemos practicar esta parte, ¿verdad? So, how long have you been, uh, have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? Bueno, entonces podemos contestar estas preguntas, si ustedes gustan. Para que podamos reforzarlo, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver, entonces no sé quién le gustaría dar una respuesta a estas preguntas. For example, you can say, so I have been uh, learning English for uh, one year or two years <coughs> or two months, for example. And then, why are you tired? Uh, I'm tired because I have been uh, working like something like that. Okay, vamos a ver, Romeo. So what happened to Romeo? <laughs> yes, teacher. Uh, the number one, how long have you been learning English? Mm -hmm. Learning English uh, about six months okay. ago. Mm -hmm. And then why are you tired? And what you have you been doing? Yes, I, I heard. Okay. Yeah, I heard. Okay. Uh, for the number two, Why are you tired? What have you been doing? Yeah, uh, I am. Uh, I have been tired because I, uh, I am tired because I have uh, working a lot of. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, awesome. What have you been eating? Uh huh. Yeah. I, I have, I. But how to let me think? <laughs> no problem. You, you can say, like, for example, I have been eating I don't know. rice, really. and chicken, things like that, fruits, vegetables. You can say something like that. Dairies. Do you guys know uh, what yeah, yeah. dairies are? Okay. I, yes, I have been eating vegetables, fruits. Yes, I have been eating based on the last week. Okay, awesome. Awesome, thank you. That was great. Thank you so much, Romeo. I appreciate that. Okay. Muy bien. That's all. Okay. Ahí tenemos a Romeo. Perfecto. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Entonces, Romeo dice que él ha estado, él ha estado comiendo, por ejemplo, vegetales. Recuerden, ¿verdad? Podemos decir así como vegetables, fruits, uh, let's say, dairies. Uh, dairies, guys, eh, son los lácteos, ¿verdad? 
son como el queso y todo ese tipo de cosas, los lácteos, crema, así se les dicen en, en inglés, dairies, como si fueran diarios, por así decirlo. <coughs> Vaya, ¿alguien más quiere participar? Vamos a ver acá. Mi teacher. All right. Awesome. Thank you. You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, number one, how long have you been learning English? Mm -hmm. I have been learned English since three years ago. Okay. Uh, number two, mm -hmm. why are you tired? What, are, what have you been doing? Mm -hmm. I'm tired because um, I I have been work a lot and 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 do a lot of work in my work. <laughs> so <laughs> mm -hmm. number three, what have you been eating? Mm -hmm. um, I have been eating. Um, um, soup, fruits, mm -hmm. meal, mm -hmm. and meat. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Sofia. I appreciate that. Okay, so uh, you are tired because you have been working. Okay, you have been working a lot. Okay, let's remember that. I have been working a lot. And then you can say like, uh, what have you been doing? So <laughs> I have been doing a lot of things at my job. For example, you can say something like that. Okay. Recordemos, ¿verdad? Como le, como le decía. No problem, Sofía. You did a great job. Thank you. Bueno, recordemos que eh, cuando nos refiramos como a nuestro lugar de trabajo, ustedes pueden decir, uh, so my, my job, things like that. Okay. So, uh, you can say, so I have been doing a lot of things at my job, for example. Or you can say, uh, I'm tired because I have been doing a lot of things. I've been doing a lot of things in, at my job, for example. And then uh, I think that the rest was just fine. Very good job. Okay, ya ven, guys, eh, esto es bueno porque podemos eh, identificar, digamos, eh, esas partes que necesitamos practicar más, ¿verdad? Ustedes lo saben, pero solamente tenemos que practicar bastante. Por eso es que me gusta hacerles estas preguntas. Bueno, ya entonces para cerrar, eh, esta parte era como el knowledge check. Esto ya lo hicieron ustedes. Está completado. Luego teníamos una lectura por acá. This was like uh, the reading exercise that you guys had. Uh, child prodigies. Okay. We had the uh, reading. Uh, las lecturas son buenas. Eh, de alguna forma nos ayudan también. Creo que ya la hicieron ustedes. De igual forma. Y por último, pues ya eh, vamos a empezar nosotros con la sección 3, ¿verdad? Creo que ya prácticamente se nos acabó el tiempo, así que um, vamos a dejarlo para mañana. Mañana vamos a empezar con esto. Vamos a trabajar eh, mañana, creo que el miércoles también. Y ya pues para el día jueves eh, creo que vamos a ver lo del examen. Y así nos vamos a distribuir para esta semana, guys. Así que, bueno, lo vamos a quedar hasta aquí por ahora. No sé si tienen ustedes alguna pregunta. Before, uh, I mean... Uh, do you guys have any questions before we go? Like, before I let you go, do you have any questions, concerns, anything that you would like to say, uh, that you would like to add to the class, for example? No questions. Estamos un poquito cansados ya. Ya, ya los veo un poquito así como con sueño. Ya, ya quieren ir a acostarse. ¿ya? <laughs> Está bien, guys. Los voy a dejar entonces libres para que vayan, descansen. Eh, no sé, tómense por ahí una sopita o algo para la cama ¿verdad? así que bueno guys uh, thank you so much for coming one more time and I will see you guys tomorrow have a great evening guys see you tomorrow see you tomorrow bye, guys teacher. bye 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 see you everybody see you tomorrow